Screen manufacturers have become obsessed with these bottles of powder. You will understand why when I turn out the lights. They are called quantum dots, nano-sized fluorescent crystals. The color of the emitted light depends on the size of the crystal, a property that is making them the most desirable component in the latest generation of televisions. But there is one big problem. The process to make heavy metal based quantum dots has inspired Professor Li Liang. So we in other words, the process to make heavy metal based quantum dots is actually a perfect way to capture heavy metal ions that dissolve in the water. That means these little particles used in TV screens can be a solution for heavy metal polluted rivers. I visit Li Liang's lab to check how it can help China to deal with pollution. The color of blue comes from copper in the water, and there is also a large amount of lead dissolved in it. The copper in the water is 300 times higher than the environmental department recommended level. The amount of lead is more than 2,000 times higher. What you need is a little bit of quantum dot absorbent. Stir it in and leave for 5 minutes. Now comes the most interesting part. The scientist has magnetized the absorbent before, so we can now use the easiest way to clear the water. The pollutant congeals to the edge of the barrier, and I can actually pull the particles out and remove them. Now the levels of copper and lead in the water is acceptable, and the process is faster than with the carbon absorbent that is currently widely used. So how can quantum dust do it so fast? If you want a cube of sugar to quickly dissolve in the water, you just need to crash it. Because the surface area of numerous tiny little particles is way much greater than that of the cube itself. Quantum dots are millions of times smaller than widths of human hair, giving them tremendous surface area. A small bottle like this can have a surface area this large. And next, Lee promised to show me these principles on a larger scale. Well, this equipment can be seen as a mini sewage treatment plant. It will give us a better sense of how we can apply this process to real life scenarios. The aim is to test 100 kilograms of sewage containing copper, lead, and zinc with a quantum dot absorbent. Unlike the test in the beaker, the water that needs to be treated in real life is not stagnant, but flows. The actual process takes more time because the absorbent needs to catch up with the heavy metal ions first before reacting with them. And one hour later, we have a full tank of clean water.